asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. He's a former barrister, he's a former immigration judge. He wrote an amazingly brilliant book called Spy Hunter. I recommend you check it out if you haven't read it before. It's an amazing read, it's a very important read. He's been a controversial figure, of course, in the past. We spoke about him spending time in prison uh, a couple of years ago. We've gone over all that. You know how much I like the man. I like listening to his opinions. And like me, he loves the sound of a Duke ball cracking off a willow bat. Michael Shrimpton, where the hell were you? (laughs) I fell asleep. I I had surgery recently. I I, uh, had very successful sinus surgery in the same hospital where the Screepals are being treated um but i'm still <laughs> oh of course you would have done because that's your neck of the woods that's right of course I've, i'd even forgotten all of that well i'm glad you're recovering and thanks oh, for yes, your no, no the, the surgery was a great success uh but um uh i i just uh <laughs> still still not fully still not fully uh compass medicine you know, surgery whacks you about a bit you take takes ah, fair enough no I, look i totally appreciate that i did say I did say to, to, to my listener, to my dear listener, I said, um, it'll be a, a very good reason. You've never left me down, ever. Just very <laughs> briefly, before we talk about Salisbury, because I'm very interested, because I've, I've had sinus issues over the years. What have you done? Have you had the passages widened a bit, or what have you had done? No, I had a, what's called a polyectomy. I, I, it was probably caused by diesel fumes. Uh, for several years, I was living in Wendover by a main road, and usually I'd have the window open in the summer and uh, it appears that uh, I'm susceptible to diesel fumes and they cause nasal polyps to grow, which obstructed the nasal passages and uh, meant it was very difficult to breathe. I was actually getting hypoxic, uh, All right. I was actually short of oxygen. So uh, it, it needed it needed sorting. So it's, been, it's been very successfully sorted thanks to a very good surgeon or very good surgical team, uh, but um, I'm still... Still, still getting over the surgery, so not, not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fully back on my feet. Yet. It's a, it's a brilliant, uh, it's, it's a brilliant legal argument you just made there as to why you were late. I love it. I'm accepting it, I, I, and I'm glad that you're on. Now, obviously, we, we've got probably 15, 16 minutes from this point, so it, it would appear that the, the narrative, the government narrative, spun by Theresa May and Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, the spinning began. Instantly, Michael, four weeks ago, the the couple had collapsed and within yes. minutes we were being told by people like Tom Tugentat and others that the Russians did it. It seems to be falling apart. What do you think? Well, it is. Uh, the, the director of GCHQ very properly pulled the rug yesterday from under the Foreign Office and the Cabinet Office. Clearly, this is being driven from the Cabinet Office and by Mark Sedwell, who is close to the Cabinet Office, who is the national security advisor who's a bit of an idiot no offense intended um i am not sure that theresa may misled the house of commons deliberately uh, my, my analysis is that she was taken in by her security officials um i don't think she realized that the uh, novichok had come from porton down <laughs> it's now very clear it's now very clear that it came from Porton Down. Now, they uh, categorically mixed- deny... This is interesting because Gary... Or, or is it Guy? Is it Guy or Gary? I think it might be Gary Aitkenhead, the chief executive there. He pulled the rug out from under Johnson by saying we never told Johnson that we could tie it to Russia. But he categorically yes. said it didn't come from us. Why do you think it came from that research facility there? Well, uh, firstly, it's convenient uh it, it's only seven miles from Porton down to salisbury uh the novichak uh, and it looks as though it was the a uh two three four variant novichak is very dangerous once it's mixed it's a binary nerve agent it was it was one of the purposes it was one of the reasons why the soviet union developed it uh, the idea is you could get binary agents through security and so on uh, you can also store the binary nerve agents for much longer because the components are the, the two components are inert. It, it's, they, they're only dangerous once they're mixed. Now, once they're mixed, they're not only dangerous, but they're difficult to transport. Uh, it, it makes logical sense that you would want to mix it near to the target area. And it just so happens that there's a chemical weapons facility just up the road. Wow. It, it, it was an obvious 
obvious obvious p- place for the novi truck to have been mixed but I, I think more than that it's absolutely clear now that it, it came out of port and down uh port and down incidentally were given 48 million quid extra in the budget after the attempt to murder the screepals uh that timing is highly suspicious uh and i think port and down are now trying to rescue their reputation uh by pulling the rug from under theresa may and boris johnson and mi6 this is really um, interesting, Michael. Now, th- thanks for saying that. A, a lot of our listeners would, of course, suspect that Porton Down, it's too, you know, it's almost too obvious. It's there. It's only a few miles from the scene. Well, yeah, before just, before we talk more about that, there's a lot of scepticism about this idea that the door could have been tainted with some of this substance. It, it, it just sounds a bit risky, Michael. If you want to impact on somebody or affect somebody with a substance like that, you might be taking a risk by putting it on the door. Are you buying this the, the door well, sc- scenario? And well, not only am I buying the door scenario, I actually anticipated it in my weekly columns on Veterans Today. I've been, I've been writing about the incident since the week it happened. And I actually predicted that they would find that the nerve agent was on the door. What you would not do is deposit your mixed novichuk on the door handle to a house and then walk off and leave it. Right. Uh, You would have to keep the door under surveillance because you might end up knocking off a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses um, or a Hermes delivery driver. Uh, You don't know that the target is going to be the next one to, to... to open his door. Now, the the other advantages, of course, of putting it on the, ex, uh, the exterior of the door is that you don't have to go into the house. Now, he's an ex-GRU officer, so he's a, a, a trained intelligence officer. We don't know quite what alarms and security he had. Certainly when, uh, certainly in the days when I was doing operational intelligence work, the security of my house was r- rather, <laughs> rather better than the average. Um, and I, the house was never, in fact, burgled. Uh, I think burgling the house, getting into the house, uh, might have been a dodgy proposition for GO2. It's clearly GO2, the German operation in London. Because they're Brits working for Germany, they wouldn't stand out. Now, the, if we explore, which I do, I mean, I, I have no problem with it, the Novichok being put on the door. And you don't have – with Novichok, it's, it's very, very lethal. You, it's much more lethal than VX. You don't need very much Novichok. So we're talking tiny amounts here. And I don't think Port Down had a very large stockpile. I think they had a stockpile of the precursors to Novichok, um, i.e. The, the, the two elements that are combined to make the Novichok. But I, I don't think they had a huge amount. Uh, but you don't need a huge amount to knock off a, a retired intelligence colonel and his daughter – and I query whether the daughter was a target. I, I think he was the target. I didn't think there was every in, any intent to uh, kill her or uh, the detective sergeant who got in the way. Well, two questions on that, Michael. If I may, two questions. It seems that it was several hours after they left the house that they became ill. And that's why people are sceptical about the door scenario. Added to oh. that, added to that, and, and then I'll shut up and let you answer. But added to that, you had the you had the placement of a police officer at the front door of the Screep House property very soon after the attack. Surely um, that police officer might have become unwell also. Do you want to try and explain that? Well, uh, the the officer who was stationed outside the house was a uniformed officer, uh, so he he almost certainly would not he, he would be in fact would have been instructed not to go into the house. Uh, the detective sergeant it was it was D.S. Bale, wasn't it? The detective sergeant who was taken down, uh, we're very pleased to see him released from hospital. Uh, he almost certainly had the keys to the house, uh, which he would have obtained from Colonel Screepel because they would have been on him. Um, and he goes into the house. Now, that makes sense. So we have a detective sergeant going into the house. He then touches the door handle, and he is then taken down. Now, the reason why there is a delay from touching the door handle to becoming ill, and bear in mind the detective sergeant is not 
severely injured. I mean, obviously, uh, I've been whacked by a chemical weapon. It's not. It's not a lot of fun. Have it's you, basically. Michael? Talk about your own. Talk about your own, ex- yeah, I, about I, your own I, exposure. I, Go on. I, I've, I've never been attacked with a nerve agent, but I was attacked with a chemical weapon in '99 after I discovered the DVD. They tried to take me out with um, saxitoxin. Uh, so I, I, I have every sympathy with Detective Sergeant Bailey. It's, it's not a lot of fun being whacked with a chemical or nerve agent, believe you me. Um, and you were treated for that and you recovered? And Oh, it, well, it was odd. I was, my life was saved by, by the end, as I say in my book, Spy Hunter, because they hadn't diagnosed a hiatus hernia. Um, I was poisoned. Um, a, a, a poisoned oyster was transferred from a, a German agent's plate to mine. And the... the uh, he was Bob Putin. He was then taken out of me. And he, having transferred this oyster to my plate, I hadn't fully ingested the oyster because I just don't like oysters. So I, I nibbled at it rather than ate it fully. And in any event, this was during the course of a long meal. And because I had a hiatus hernia, I had severe acid reflux. So the, the poison was actually destroyed in the oesophagus. It made a mess of my oesophagus. And any, anybody, whether I'm still in court, not, not as a barrister, but doing tribunal work and small claims. And any usher who knows me knows to pour an extra jug of water because I still, still wet the old whistle um, as a sort of byproduct of that attack 18 years ago, 19 years ago now. And of course, that's, um, it's coming back to, it's coming we, back to me now. I, I've recommended people read the book. It, it's... I remember the story now. I'd forgotten about that. I'd totally yeah, forgotten oh, yes, about no, that. It was, yeah. quite, it was quite hilarious. I mean, it was yeah. very funny because of the phone calls that were going in the, back and forth between Dachau and um, and Boris Laputin. Uh, he was in the penthouse of a very famous Egyptian, I won't say which Egyptian, uh, in Park Lane. Uh, I thought it was legit. I was told he was working for the CIA. He was flowed in from New York on Concord. So they, they spent a lot of money on trying to whack me and they set up an elaborate deception involving a posh firm of solicitors who said that he was coming in from New York with information on a case that we were doing about a dodgy company in the Isle of Man or get against a dodgy company in the Isle of Man. And this firm of solicitors was, was closely linked to the Labour Party and one of the uh, – it, it was actually had a link to a former Labour Attorney General who I met, who I knew personally. And – so I, my guard was down because of the this, because of the solicitors because this was arranged as a professional meet, and you know it was an expensive penthouse in Park Lane. I really didn't think this was an assassination attempt. The CIA were trying to warn me as they were maintaining a watch with MI5 on the premises because there was an arms deal going down. I knew nothing about the arms deal, and I'm polite. I, I don't leave my mobile phone on during dinner or you know, if I'm having drinks. Uh, the CIA were trying to reach me to warn me. There was an attempt to hit me. Um, uh, and it was only the following morning that uh, you know, they established I was still alive. They rang me and were delighted to find I was still alive. Um, I'd spent a very ill night. At one point, I thought I was going to snuff it, and I was sort of crawling across. I collapsed in the bathroom. I was half in and half out of the bathroom. I was crawling towards my bedside phone to send for an ambulance. Thinking, wow. oh God, I'm about to snuff it. Uh, it was all. It was all. Looking back, it was all toxic great, stuff. So this great It so, wasn't. It wasn't much fun at the time. I, I can't say. imagine it was, Michael. And you know, you're you're probably giving us a kind of a picture of how the Screepals would have been feeling in. The first couple of weeks yeah, yeah, of their hospitalisation, anyway. Yeah, every single the screwballs. I'm with DS Bailey. Now, it's it, it almost certain the case that somebody screwed up at Porton Down with the mixing. Novichuk is difficult to mix, and bear in mind, uh, Porton Down don't have a big stockpile of Novichuk. They've got some, but not a lot. They're not used to mixing Novichuk, and they're not used to you. Well, they've never used it before operationally. So this is the first operational use of Novichuk virus ever, as far as I know. Um, certainly in the UK, uh, the mixing is is very important. You've got to get it in the right proportions. And I'm quite confident they did not get it in the right proportions, which is why it failed to kill the Screeples and why D.S. Bailey uh, was ill, but, but you know, thankfully has now been released from hospital. Um, so we expect now the Screeples to make a full recovery. I, the way I see this, Mike. Well, I, I, yes, indeed, indeed. I gather the daughter has been talking to her friend in Moscow, and the Russians have. Sort of, I yeah, haven't listened to it. Unver- unver- it. Yeah, unverified. The, the phone call is unverified, but but as the day goes on, it, it's looking 
it's leaning towards the phone call being genuine. I look at it, yes, Michael. That, I, that was my that was my initial yeah my initial thoughts were that was probably a genuine phone call. But bear in mind, Yulia Skripal doesn't live in England. She lives in Moscow, and she's a loyal patriotic Russian. And I, I think, I mean, I've never met the Skripals. I, I I was in the same hospital with them, but it, I was, obviously I wasn't in a position to, I wasn't well enough apart from anything else, but I, wasn't, I was on oxygen. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't yeah, yeah. in a position to go around and say hello to them, and they were under uh, they were under heavy police guard. They were armed police at, um, at the hospital when I was there. And presumably, and I, Michael, sorry, presumably the UK authorities are telling the Skripals that the Russians did it. Now, because we've only got about five minutes left, I want to get into yeah. this. It's obvious that there were several groups of people interested in embarrassing and humiliating the state of Russia in election year, in World right. Cup year. And of course, we have this whole Brexit thing, which has got to be related to this, because one of the payoffs seems to be, oh, you know, we, we need to draw closer together against yeah. the against the Russian threat. So, so any number of groups of people could have come together to say, well, look, it's in our best interest to have a go at um, Russia in this manner. Obviously, the deep state of this country, the German deep state, as you've said, because, of course, the EU is run by, by Germany. Right. Uh, of course it is. So so there, there have to be collusion here of several parties. What do you think? Well, I, I, not necessarily several parties, but it, it looks very almost overwhelmingly that it was GO2. Uh, GO2 have access to Porton Down. GO2 have assets inside MI6. Um, obviously, they don't go around saying we're from GO2 and we're working for the Germans. They pretend to be Brits and they pretend to be working with MI6. And they come out of Vauxhall Cross, which is MI6 headquarters. Now, they actually are based in a secure part of Vauxhall Cross, which six can't get into. Um, but for somebody at Porton Down would easily be, t- the director of Porton Down would easily be taken in by this. Uh, and I suspect he now realizes he's been had. Um, God knows what bullshit they pushed past him to, to get hold of his some of his knowledge. I mean, the director may not have even have been in the loop. It's, it may have happened without the director's knowledge. Um, but it, it looks overwhelmingly to be a GO2 operation. Um, it's overwhelmingly likely that the, the knowledge opera came out of Porton Down. It was mixed at Porton Down. It was mixed in the incorrect proportions. And yes, I agree, Brexit is linked into that. Um, Germany had every motive uh, to... Uh, embarrassed Putin in advance of the election, and President Putin had absolutely no motive whatsoever for staging <laughs> Kemp Nerve. None attack. whatsoever, and, and you it know, regardless, whatsoever, yeah, no none whatsoever, and regardless of your geopolitical point of view, regardless of your your persuasion, regardless of your loyalties, in the cold light of day, you've got to say the Russian state had nothing to gain whatsoever, particularly as I think you and I have spoken so many times over the years. I, I know we've spoken about spy swaps in the past. Why would you do that? Because in all likelihood, because what you've described, by the way, Michael, is with this GO2 having guys at, at MI6 and at GCHQ, and of course they'll have guys in Israel, and Israel Israel will have guys over here. All these intelligence agencies, they're not really loyal. I don't think they're loyal to countries anymore. They're not loyal to states. They're loyal to ideologies. They're loyal to a one-world government, a European Union. So it doesn't matter anymore whether they're German or Israeli or American. Is what I believe. But anyway, look, we could be here all night talking about that. Yes, but, but, I, I don't necessarily share that in us. No, I, I know I you don't. I know you don't agree with that. We've, we've, we've butted heads on this in the past and we will do again in the future. <laughs> so what you have basically is then, you have... And, 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 the, and the media, of course, not only the UK media, but the French uh, media, the German media, they're not doing their jobs, Michael. They're not laughing at this as they should be and mocking this and hanging it out to dry. They're going along with it. They're playing yes. the game, right? Yes. Well, they're idiots. Um, I, I mean, I've been absolutely clear from the word go that it couldn't possibly be Russia. Indeed, uh, the, the, we apply the Cubono principle, who gains? Well, Russia has absolutely nothing to gain, no motive. And it, it is far from clear that Russia has retained any stocks of Novichok at all. The Russians don't do nerve agents. They don't, they, the Soviet Union did. But the, traditionally, even the Soviet Union in World War II did not use nerve agents or chemical weapons. It, they're not really a Russian thing. Uh, I know there was the attack using ricin in the 1970s on Georgi Markov, but that looks to have been set up by the DVD. That doesn't look to me 
and if the KGB were involved, but you've got to be careful with the KGB because they were heavily penetrated by the DVD who set up Russian intelligence after the Bolshevik Revolution, which of course is bankrolled from Germany, in order to get Russia out of World War II, in order to, World War I rather, to free up German troops to uh, launch the spring offensive in 1918 in the West. And by the way, I'll take you to a cricket match, if, if not this summer, next summer at Old Trafford, I'll take you to a cricket match and you can tell me privately, we're not talking about the Germans here, we're talking about the Frankfurt Rothschilds. Again, we've butted heads on this over the years, <laughs> yes. me and you. Um, but Michael, it's an awful mess, isn't it? And can I just ask you before we run out of time, and thanks for getting back on to us, I appreciate that. Yes, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about falling It's all right, my, you, don't, you don't have still to... Still not fully, fully... You don't um, have to apologise to me. Fully recovered from my op, yeah, but getting there, but not fully, not fully recovered, yeah. Russia has done the right thing by Bashar al-Assad's government in Syria, regardless of what you might think about autocratic governments. They've done the right thing. They've had to protect their own interests there. So as well as well, Brexit yeah, and everything so, so, else... I mean, Bashar al-Assad is a Russian ally, for good or bad, for better or worse. Um, I'm no fan of Bashar, but, but Syria is a mess. There is no nice Western democratic alternative um it's it's bashar Assad or or uh, isis but it's a mess it's a mess not made by bashar al-assad it's a mess made by the intelligence agencies of america and this country and israel it's 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 their collusion with the saudis i i I think it's a bit more complex that with respect um well i know it's i know it's a bit more complicated than that but these lunatic wahhabi head choppers trained in saudi arabia and in turkey have been armed and funded by our governments, Michael. There's no two ways about that. The, the, the problems in Syria are not made or haven't been made by Bashar, even if you sympathise with people who are fed up of family dynasties and autocratic, you know, autocratic systems. We totally understand yeah. that. But, but Assad has, has had no part in the mess that is in Syria at the moment. What we're seeing in Syria is what we saw in Libya, which the Foreign Office of course, the for, not the Foreign Office, but the, the Foreign Affairs Committee wrote a report on it in 2015, which basically said, like Iraq, whole pack of lies. What we're seeing in the media about Syria is a whole pack of lies. Our dirty paw prints are all over Syria. Final word to you on that, my friend. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm, I held no brief for Bashar Assad. I, I think that I, I wouldn't excuse him of responsibility for the Syrian civil war. I think he is partly to blame, but I do agree that Russia... Uh, it can't be criticised too strongly. They're playing a real politic in uh, Syria um, and they're dealing with the situation as it is, whereas we in the West are tending to deal with the situation as we might like it to be, but it ain't. Um, now, but I've never, I'm not a Syrian specialist. I, I, someone has asked me if I'd be willing to go to Syria as part of a, a delegation. Uh, we've got some slight problems in Syria at the moment with special forces. <laughs> we've got British and American special forces on that's the right, ground. That's right, that's right, that's right, which is a disgrace. I won't, I, won't say, I, I, I won't say very much. I, I'm always at the disposal of uh, a, 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 a people for a, a bit of back-channel negotiation. So it's not impossible that I might end up um, uh, going into Syria um, at some point, uh, and I'll no doubt f- know a great deal more. One well, thing I can do, say Michael. is that the Syrian government were most definitely not responsible for the chemical weapons attack, uh, which was blamed on Assad, but in fact that was Turkey. That was Turkish intelligence. There was a Tur- Turkish intelligence colonel on the ground. It's interesting uh, because uh, somebody, I, uh, somebody mentioned that to me, and of course I didn't run with it because that person wouldn't um, allow their name be mentioned, but that's that's very interesting. No, well, that, that, I can confirm that. The, the, it was it was Turkey. It was Turkish intelligence. And of course, uh, well, 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 Turkey would gain from that, of course. Indeed. Michael, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to just uh, give a big plug for Spy. If you've not read Spy Hunter, folks, go and get it. It's a terrific read. Buy it online. It isn't expensive. If you can't afford to buy it, check, check it out from your local library. Um, good luck with the convalescing, Michael. Thanks for coming back to us, mate. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. We'll have a bit more time and we'll thrash and out I some of these issues. No, you don't have to do that again. I was trying very hard not to drift off, but I, I, I before I could before I could catch myself, I was in the in the land of um, in the, the land, land of, of not. The, the, the anesthetic hasn't quite worn off yet. Well, I can imagine it hasn't. It was worth while waiting because talking about how that Novichok is mixed is of huge interest. To us and our listeners are tweeting about it. Thanks, mate. Enjoy um, the cricket in the coming days and weeks, as I know you will. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the not too distant future. Thanks, Michael. Michael. Thank you, Richard. Brilliant. Uh, Michael Shrimpton, great to have Michael on. It's a great, good sport to come back as well and to, uh, to say he'd fallen asleep. You don't get that sort of honesty very often in the 
uh, in these places.